Good morning, Hawaii, and welcome to this edition of Community Matters, a public service program produced and presented by this iHeartRadio station. A very, very, very good morning to you, and thank you for being a part of this program. My name is Rick Amata, and I'll be your host today. It's a great conversation that we have every year around this time, and it features the whole idea of celebrating those who excel in the world of health care. As a matter of fact, the driving force is Hawaii Healthcare Heroes. Today, we are reunited with Hilton Rathel, President and CEO of the Healthcare Association of Hawaii. And Dr. Kelly Hutchins will be joining us. She is one of five Hawaii Healthcare Heroes last year, and also with uh, Paci- Hawaii Pacific Health. We're going to engage in conversation with both of our friends. Hilton, we'll start with you. A very, very good morning. Good to see you again. Good morning, Rick. Thank you so much for the opportunity to come in today and to talk about this fantastic program. So in the past year or so, or even beyond, I turned on my television and was hopeful to find a rerun of Seinfeld. But no, there's Hilton again. Uh, disseminating very important information. How has been the pace of info sharing and more for you lately? Well, the good news is that I'm not in front of the camera as much as I have been. Uh, (laughs) But that's good because it means that the impact of the pandemic has lessened. Now, we still have 20 to 30 patients a day in our hospitals with COVID. Um, Fortunately, the death rate is a lot lower than what it used to be. And so it's still highly infectious. People still need to be taking precautions, getting their vaccinations. But um, the you know there's there's lots of issues going on in healthcare, lots of challenges, and um, but it's a it's a great industry to be part of. There's no doubt that there have been strides uh, made uh, both in the public and the private sector. And I'd love to invite you back, and we'll have a long conversation about the details of those initiatives. But I love the time we spend together with Hawaii Healthcare Heroes. Would you mind setting the table of exactly what this is all about? Well, the Hawaii Healthcare Hero Program is a program unique to Hawaii. It was started about 10 years ago by the Healthcare Association of Hawaii. And what we look for is individuals in healthcare who are going above and beyond in terms of their job. Now, this is one of the unique aspects of this program is that the nominations for the healthcare heroes, and we pick five every year, are patients and or their families. And so it's an amazing opportunity. Now there are so many incredible things that happen every single day in our clinics, our hospitals, and other healthcare settings across the state. But what we're looking for is those individuals who've really sort of touched someone's life, who've really gone above and beyond. Now, it could be a doctor, It could be a nurse, it could be a respiratory therapist, it could be an activities coordinator, it could be anyone in healthcare who's really touched a patient and or their family. And that's, again, we choose five a year and recognize them in different ways. Mm -hmm. You know, as you're speaking, uh, the word passion, dedication, and obviously professionalism are part of the determining characteristics of those who are nominated and those who go beyond. I would like to digress for just a bit because we are facing a healthcare issue here in our state that is profound, and that is a shortage of physicians, specialists, and even nurses. What's your assessment of our present condition, Hilton, and what do you foresee uh, for the future? Well, as we're all aware, we have a shortage of, of workers, not only in healthcare, but many other industries. The counties are looking for workers, the state's looking for workers, the hospital, the hotels are looking for workers. There's almost every industry segment you talk to is looking for workers. Now, we do a survey every two years, and we've, we're, we did our first one in 2019. We did our second one in 2022. We did our, doing our third one this year. We'll have the report out later this year. And that's a definitive look at how many different openings, what is the actual demand for healthcare, and we do that across a variety of healthcare professions. But there are literally hundreds of vacancies or openings, whether you're talking about doctors, whether you're talking about nurses, 
Um, radiology techs, for example, that's one acute area of shortage we have. And all the way to CNAs or certified nurse assistants, medical assistants, there is a variety of openings across the whole mm-hmm. segment of healthcare. Love all of that. Thank you for sharing. And the encouragement uh, for those to pursue uh, a career in the healthcare industry, the healthcare field, highly supported. And uh, we're hopeful that folks will be inspired after our conversation today. I'm going to turn to you since we spent a lot of time together and have you introduce a very special friend and guest that is in studio with us today. Would you please? Okay, we're very, very pleased to have Dr. Kelly Hutchins with us today. Um, She is one of our healthcare heroes for 2023, Mm -hmm. and she was one of those individuals who was recognized by the family that she interacted with and was recognized for. And the patient's name was uh, Aiden, Mm -hmm. and um, it's an amazing story, and I'd like to get Kelly to provide some more details, but... She truly, Dr. Hutchins, truly exemplifies everything we're looking for in a healthcare hero. And we're really appreciative of the work you have done uh, as a judge Mm -hmm. um, and the work that Sweetie Sweetie and others are doing to be the judges this year Mm -hmm. and the media um, recognition or the media that we get to tell these amazing, truly amazing stories. Love all of that and more. And Dr. Kelly, we welcome you in the studio. A very good morning to you. Thanks so very much, Rick. And um, it's a pleasure to meet you. It's an absolute pleasure and honor to be here. And thank you, Hilton, so much for um, introducing me very kindly. And um, of course, for this. Well, I'd love to learn more about you. I'm sure others would as well. Would you mind sharing about yourself, starting with originally from where? Sure. I'm. Uh, thank you. I'm from Michigan, uh, mm-hmm. Livonia, Michigan. I could show you the hand on the mitten. <laughs> Um, and then I did my medical training in Des Moines, Iowa, and then I did a medicine, internal medicine and pediatrics residency down in New Orleans, followed by a pediatric hematology oncology fellowship up in Detroit mm-hmm. um, and started working there for a few months and then came out here and have been uh, super fortunate to be here for six years now at Kapilani Medical Center. For my goodness. Children. I love that. What was the motivation for you to become who you are today? Oh, uh, so... Uh, Ever since actually being in college, I was exposed through a volunteer experience where um, we worked with families um, who had critical illnesses, Mm -hmm. particularly cancer. And it was seeing um, through this dance marathon, actually, the um, interaction between the physician and the family on the outside, not actually in the medical center. And I thought it was such a unique bond that they had created. And that actually was the first um, inspiration for me to be like, oh, I want a relationship like that with my my patients and families. And ever since that, you know, I loved a lot of different parts of medical school and my rotations and all that, but it was always the pediatric hematology oncology times that um, I truly felt passionate and um, just that's where I wanted to be. I would imagine, and Hilton, you could comment as well, is that the various specialties that one is drawn to in the medical field, uh, that's where degrees of fulfillment, satisfaction, and it's beyond the technical aspects of medicine, it's where you're touched by your heart, your soul, your spirit, and more. And it sounds like that's exactly what has happened with you. I, w- I would say so. You know, yes, of course, like the medical part's very fascinating, right? Mm-hmm. And disease processes and all that. But um, the best part truly really is the relationships you can make with your um, patients and their families, families like Aiden's parents and Aiden. And, um, and of course, your colleagues and the team. And this is a huge huge you know huge undertaking no one does this in a silo it would be impossible and so um it's just a really special uh, field yeah as you've uh, progressed uh and going through the nomination process and being recognized and the role that you have today what was the impact to you personally of being acknowledged for the good work that you do yeah, it was uh, at first shocking. <laughs> you know, I didn't know what this. I truly didn't know what this was. And um, I do think it's an an awesome, amazing thing that H H does, and I'm super grateful. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it just you know, um, you do these things because this is you know what we do, and then to be mm-hmm. recognized for something that sometimes you feel like you should, Aiden unfortunately um, succumbed to his disease, mm-hmm. and um, uh, again to be honored by his parents. Um, is just beyond, you know, 
a privilege that I really just can't say yeah. enough. If you don't mind, mm-hmm. like to learn more about your relationship with Aiden and his family. How did you first meet? Sure. So, yeah. So, um, so Aiden, uh, it's been a few years now, so he um, passed away uh, over three years ago now. But mm-hmm. um, So, he had initially had a seizure, and I wasn't initially on you know, when he first, first presented, but um, it was found that he had uh, what's called a high-grade glioma, um, essentially a terminal form of brain cancer. Mm. Um, and he, you know, he underwent resection, and I met with the family um, to discuss, you know, the diagnoses and then the treatment going forward. And so um, then he underwent, you know, radiation, chemotherapy, and he'd come to the clinic frequently and, um, you know, get his chemo and we were together for over over a year. Over a year. And he was out. How old was he at this time? Um, I, rec- I believe. I actually have to go back. Approximately. 9, 10, 9, 10, 11. Okay. Yeah. He was a seventh grader when he was diagnosed. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. I was thinking about what he would be now because he'd be a teenager. You're yeah. just chatting. Here. See, usually we don't promote math on this program. <laughs> so I'll just go with seventh grade. Okay. No. <laughs> thank you for that. Apologies for that. But. Um, but yeah, such a fun, witty, witty little boy and, you know, would always talk about his sports. You know, he mm-hmm. loved his team. Seth Curry was like an idol to him and oh, he'd boy. always wear his jerseys and his hats and we'd go back and forth. And, you know, I'm, I am a Lions fan in Detroit and he would pity me for that. But we'd go back and forth, you know, about, about teams and stuff. And had a, So I just have to interject yeah. that it's been a pleasure getting to talk with you today. However, I'm a Chicago Bears fan. <laughs> And mystically, the microphone ceased to work for Doctor. I'm not sure how that how that happened, but I love that that commonality and uh, that you had uh, with him. Right. So he'd come to the clinic often, you know, and bring smiles all the time. And uh, you know, we are told from Sherilyn and Terrence's parents how much he actually enjoyed coming, and right. um, he would again like just you know light up and we'd chit chat and talk non medical stuff and. Um, he was strong and brave and um, amazing and, again, would teach us about the stuff he's learning. He loved school. He loved mm. his classmates. He loved life. Um, he was just a wonderful little boy with a wonderful family. And All right. His parents are amazing. If I may ask, how is it – it's obviously possible, but how do you go through that process of separating the clinical versus the personal yeah, so sometimes it can be hard, right? Yeah. Sometimes it can be hard, and um, I I yeah. appreciate even so, yeah, so, tackling the question, right? So it can be challenging, right? Because you have to focus on, you know, you do have to focus on mm-hmm. the disease at hand, and um, you know, putting up sometimes barriers. You know, you don't. You know, some might think you don't want to get too close, but really, we're all human, and um, sometimes it's just hard not to develop that strong relationship. Yeah. And, um, I I personally have found it quite valuable. Um, you know, it's it's going to be different for the different patients and relationships you have. Everything is every, everyone's not going to feel the same way, right. or, you know. But um, but just yeah, tackling the process of you know trying to manage the disease and the and the and the person and um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, again, it's a team. It's a team effort, and we have mm-hmm. our colleagues and we have our support staff with us, and so I think it's uh, yeah, it's really a team effort. So, I, and I appreciate you. Uh, tackling that and the reason why is that we in the public have perceptions perceptions that are either through personal experience and secondhand information maybe a book or article that we read a meme something on social media one of those tv shows and there is an assumptions perhaps made and what i'd like to highlight is we are talking about heroes today and that empathy and that connection that foregoes or even complements the technical, clinical, doctoral uh, relationship you have to express and to share personally with those that you treat and care for, that's in and of itself the reason why we have a conversation about heroes. Hilton, Dr. Story, your thoughts. As I said, um, Dr. Hutchins truly exemplifies what we're looking for in a healthcare hero. And it's amazing with Aiden's story that even though he was being treated for 15, 18 months at Capilani, received excellent care from the team, but he passed away. This was a terminal disease. And yet, even though he died, this young boy died, 
his parents felt so passionately about the care provided by Dr. Hutchins and mm-hmm. the team that he was they nominated her as a healthcare hero and of all mm-hmm. the other submissions we got she was one of those five that was selected now we have um, our nomination process for this year is still open uh, mm-hmm. people can go online hah.org and the deadline is May 28 so we're coming up close to the deadline mm-hmm. for this year and we're looking for other stories again for people who have done what Dr. Kelly Hutchins, our other healthcare heroes have done, that have truly come, gone above and beyond, that have not just treated them from a technical perspective, mm-hmm. as Dr. Hutchins explained, but have connected with them emotionally, connected with the family, saw them as much more than just a patient or a number or a disease. Mm-hmm. And that's what's amazing about the work that Dr. Hutchins and all her fellow healthcare professionals do. I want to thank you again very much. We're going to continue uh, with Doctor. I want to remind folks, you're dialed in to Community Matters, public service program produced and presented by this iHeart radio station. And it's a delight to have our friends in studio today. I want to kind of jump to an event that's coming up as well. And it's something that is very memorable in my attendance in previous years. Uh, talking about the uh, the gala, and it is coming up. It's coming up very soon. Yes. Yeah, it's uh, October twenty sixth mm-hmm. is our annual gala. So we have an event where we normally have four to five hundred people there, and we it's all health, healthcare related. We have a number of different awards. We recognize some of our key legislators, for example, some of our leaders, public health, things like that. But the highlight of the evening is the recognition of the five healthcare mm-hmm. heroes. Now, through our media partners, they are, each of these heroes are, are interviewed. So we get to see a video segment. We get to hear their stories. They get to come up on stage and receive an award. So it's a very, very memorable event. Not everyone gets to go up on a stage in front mm-hmm. of four or 500 people to be recognized, but our five healthcare heroes do. They also get recognized in the Star Advertiser and in mis, uh, Midweek. Their stories are actually not only shared at the gala, they're also shared on the news on the week mm-hmm. following the gala. And so there's a variety of ways that we recognize these five healthcare heroes each year. So, uh, Doctor, how has this, I started alluded to it earlier, but to receive this type of recognition, uh, what does it mean personally? What does it mean professionally? And is there one comment that you may have received from somebody you know, don't know, that kind of exemplifies the hero concept here? Uh, well, I, th- I mean, again, this has been like above and beyond what I ever had envisioned something happening to me in my professional um, mm-hmm. career. I mean, truly it has. And um, yes, you know, it just seems like a lot of accolades and everything that um, I'm very grateful for, um, and the gala was amazing. I mean, it was, it's a beautiful evening and I, you know, again, I didn't realize there'd be hundreds of people there and then <laughs> to see everyone's stories broadcast was really special. And, um, just so many kind, positive comments yeah. from people, you know, people you don't know, it's just been truly remarkable. What do you think the general public again, uh, may not realize about serving as as a physician, but in healthcare in general, what could we learn about your daily routine or encounters that you deal with or experiences unique to what you do? Sure, um, I do think you know that humanistic part where, and I think a lot of people probably do recognize that, but it really, um, you know, providers do really care about the patient and the person as a whole and the family as a unit. And it is more um, than just, you know, taking care of a disease. It's about taking care of the person. And um, mm. again, it matters a lot. You know, people do matter a lot to us as sure. providers. Make sure people know that too. But, yeah. And uh, our friends that are listening, Elton, we'd like to encourage everyone listening, participate in the nomination process. Think inwardly about individuals in healthcare that have made an impact on you your family, dear friends, whomever it might be. And what would you say to invite and encourage 
folks to participate? Well, this again is a very, very unique event. It's a unique opportunity for patients and the families to recognize individuals in healthcare. And it doesn't, again, it doesn't have to be a doctor, it doesn't have to be a nurse, even though we have many of those. The people can go online, hah.org, to our website to nominate an individual. This is, there's so many stories out there. We can't tell all the stories. You know, we mm-hmm. get dozens, if not, you know, more than 100 applications each year. Right. All of them are amazing stories. We have to whittle it down to select just five. But there are so many amazing stories. And Dr. Hutchins is one of those individuals who's representative, as she talked about, of so many amazing people that she works with in her organization that are taking care of people every single day across this state. So if you don't mind, I'm just going to share. During the years of judging, there are many difficult things that we confront. I do a four-hour radio show every day, raising a couple of kids who are now young adults. I promise not to use the word tuition, but I just did. But to review and absorb and be privy to the stories that are shared in this nomination, how do you select an individual or five individuals or anyone? Because I want to really put an exclamation point on what you said. There are so, so, so very many in our community that are helping, that are serving and assisting in so many different ways. There was one commonality that kind of stood out. And in many of the nominations, it was health care from therapists to that would visit them at their homes, that would take it upon themselves out of their incredible day to still carve out that moment or two to touch base with families that were very special. Well, that's one of the amazing things about healthcare, Rick. We are so appreciative of the time that you put in to be a judge for the for, for when you're the number of years that you're mm-hmm. a judge. We're so appreciative of the time today to talk about this program. But healthcare is an amazing it's it's for almost everyone that's in healthcare, it's way more than just a job. It is uh, is their mission in life, it's something they're very passionate about. And it, the reality is it reached it needs to be. As you heard from Dr. Hutchins, you know, these are people that are in pain, their families are really suffering, they don't know what's going on. Is the patient gonna make it? Are they not gonna make it? It's it's something that you that you do have I mean, it's very, very personal and so it's a challenging field, but it's also an incredibly rewarding field for people to work in. Thank you for that very much as a reminder and reinforcement. Um Dr. Hutchins, I'll, I'll come back to you for a moment, if you don't mind. Um, where you are today, where do you see yourself personally and professionally going into the future of what you would like to pursue and accomplish? Yeah, thank you. Um, I love what I do. It is mm-hmm. truly a privilege to do what I do. I hope to do this for the rest of my career, and I hope to be able to do it here in Hawaii um, with our team and at Kapiolani. Um yeah, and I just want to keep taking, you know, helping to take care of kids and their families is my priority. In many of the areas in which you serve, are you optimistic that there have been developments and progress made in various forms of treatments? Yeah, for sure. So childhood cancer outcomes are have come so far in the past decade. So, you know, unfortunately, patients like Aiden who have diagnoses such as high grade gliomas, there are still diseases that we struggle with. But in general, um, survival for kids with cancer is way better, 85, 90, 95 percent, depending on the disease. Um, And so and there's so many things being developed all the time, you know, and new treatment modalities. You hear on the news all the time about targeted things and immunotherapies and all that. So, um, yeah, it's it's a super exciting field Mm -hmm. and we are super hopeful for continued success and um, outcomes as well as side of, you know, decreasing side effects. Um, yeah, for sure. Right. For sure. Hopeful. Can you share a bit about Kapiolani? Yes. It's a wonderful place to work. I feel again, super fortunate. Um, 
from you know our direct team, um, the doctors, the nurses, the all the um, inter, interdisciplinary, multidisciplinary, from child life to mm-hmm. chaplain to uh, dietary. Yeah, we are so fortunate for all of um, the the team members that we do have and the subspecialists, the administration. I mean, really, everyone has been super supportive. And um, again, I feel very fortunate to be here. I'd like to, uh, before, because our time is uh, on the wane, make sure that we can connect either with you directly or at the very least to learn more about Kapiolani, the experience, the services, et cetera. How, how would we pursue that? Website, perhaps, social media? Yeah, sure. And- of course, yes. Yeah. So um, their HPH website and uh, physicians are listed on the HPH website, Hawaii okay. Pacific Health website. Um, there, There's always... The phone. I mean, there's old school. A phone. You can always call I'm the sorry. operator and get a hold of whoever is either on call, you know, if it's actually like a direct phone call, phone call. Wow, um, you talk on a phone? Yeah. <laughs> sorry about that. I haven't done um, that. Yeah. No. In terms of social media, I'm sure I'm not. All I have is Facebook, truly. I would, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I would probably do just a, a search on the platforms. Sure, right. That will probably uh, come up, no problem at all. They have Hilton. a great website. And they, um, as, as all of our hospitals do, and it explains all the different programs they have, as Dr. Cutchin said, um, you can look at, uh, look for physicians, you can sort by specialty, sort by area. So there's a huge amount of information. Their marketing communications teams does a phenomenal job of um, explaining all, all the different services they have. And we're, we're, we're so pleased that, uh, and so proud of, uh, you know, Capulani and Hawaii Pacific Health as uh, mm-hmm. part of our association. Excellent. We have just a few moments. I'd like to turn to Dr. Kelly again and to use a few moments to share whatever you would like in closing of our program today. Thank you. I, again, just want to thank you so much for having me here for this opportunity, for your past judging judging of, mm. um, of this honor um, to iHeartRadio and to Hilton again, to the organization, to you and Again, what a privilege it is to be in this group of people who are selected among so many. Uh, I can only imagine wonderful candidates and um, stories. And then again, just what an honor it really is to have had Sherilyn and Terrence, um, Aiden's parents, Mm. nominate. To have it from a family really does mean a lot. Um, So I I, I agree. I would highly encourage people um, who have those feelings about your providers or a healthcare worker to um, really consider um, nominating for that. There we go. Excellent. Uh, Dr. Kelly Hutchins, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you so thank much you. for having me. All right, brother. Brother Hilton, final thoughts from you for today. Well, thank you so much again, Rick, for your support of this program, for your st- um, all the work you do to help promote this program. Mm. We really do appreciate this time. Again, if anyone is interested in nominating a healthcare hero, hah.org. The uh, nomination period closes May 28th, coming up. But again, this is an incredible opportunity to recognize those individuals who are working every day to take care of all of us and to advance healthcare, to provide health and, and take care of people at all different stages of their life. So thanks again, Rick. It's, it is a pleasure. And I thank you for the kind words. Uh, same as I asked of Dr. Kelly, if we'd like to connect with Healthcare Association of Hawaii. Can we do the same? Go online and more. Exactly. We have a very good website as well, hah.org, the same place where you can go to nominate your healthcare heroes. We have a variety of information about that, but uh, we're very, very proud to have be representing about 170 healthcare organizations mm-hmm. across the state of Hawaii. There we go. Um, before we go, I'm just curious, Doctor, have you now, after our conversation, have you relinquished your fandom of the Detroit Lions and shifted to the Chicago Bears? Never. No, never. My, On that I'll note. Say no. my, my boyfriend is a Chicago Bears fan, but we still see him. Oh, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can, we bring it, can we bring him in for the <laughs> so last few moments? No. Yeah. There we go. Dr. Kelly, thanks again. Thank, Thank you. you. Hilton, always a pleasure. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you very much for the information, Hilton, and reminding you. To contact Kapiolani, go to hawaiipacifichealth.org. And thank you, folks, joining us. Uh, This edition of Community Matters Public Service Program produced and presented by this iHeartRadio station. 
please join us next week at this time, and we'll connect again because our community matters. Aloha.